This is the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord Yahweh. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai. 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 Call Haloyim La Abanawa Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I've learned this 100% truth, and who rules very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the beloved elder, the Zaquan of the men of Israel, Kent, the Zaquan Chazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina, and a hearty, while a healthy Shalawan to you, Achyam Wa'akwatyum, you brethren and sisters, who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, to y'all, I like to say Shalawam, and that is Hebrew for peace. This is the Ach Alaya Ban Yahawada, the brother Elijah, son of Judah. And I'm here with a quick exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahawah, Bahasham Yahawah Shai, Bahasham Rachaha Kwadash. All right, in these last days for the edification of the elect. All right, and when I say the elect, I'm speaking in reference of the chosen Israelites, as you Israelites today are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, we are the Israelites, according to the Bible, and this exhortation is for you. As you can see, even by the title of this exhortation being, he is not here, for he is risen. Let's hop right back into the scriptures and Abaratazah, Lord willing, this is edifying. All right. So let's go ahead to the book of Matthew chapter 28. And really, you could start at verse one, but let's get straight to the point. Right. Which Matthew chapter 28 is dealing with the account of when uh, Mary Magdalene and, and the other Mary, as the scriptures refer to her as. Right. Um, they went and visited our Lord Yahweh Shah's sepulcher right, or sepulchre, you know, however you like to pronounce that word is basically our lord yahweh shah's burial site man you know where they went to to go and mourn over our lord yahweh shah's crucifixion man and his death right and this is what took place this is what transpired upon them reaching the sepulcher right matthew chapter 28 and verse 5 and, and, and really you know like i said you could start up but it says in verse 5 and the angel answered and said unto the woman Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yahweh Shai, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you, right? And so this is, you know, basically the, the greeting, the salutation that the angel had given uh, Mary and Mary, man, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, right? The angel comforted them while they were in mourning and even in fear. When you read how the angel appeared and, you know, how the soldiers, the guards that were guarding the tomb, guarding the sepulcher, you know, they out of fear. You know, shook until they were dead. You know, basically they had heart attacks, man. Just looking at the angel appear and, and, and came down and the angel, what, moved the rock out of his place and and told uh, Mary and Mary to, to, to basically look in the sepulcher. Matter of fact, let me see. Yeah. You know, to look into the sepulcher and see where Yahweh Shai was laying, where he no longer is laying. Right. You see, the angel had to even, you know, matter of fact, like I said, you could start all the way up where it tells you in verse two that the angel came and rolled the door back, but no one was in it. <laughs> the, the sepulcher, the grave was untouched, but Yahushua's body was no longer in it, you know, which, you know, a lot of people will say, no, nah, you know, you know, matter of fact, we're going to read it. I don't want to jump the gun. I want to get ahead of myself, you know, but as we flow in the spirit, man, what you're supposed to see here, you know, if you are spiritually minded, if, if the heavenly father, you know, is giving you the Holy Spirit, the Rechach 
to understand these writings, to understand what is written, is that Yahweh Shai was crucified and he was buried, man. You know, and and three days later, even as he prophesied, even as you know the heavenly Father promised that life would enter back into him, our Lord Yahweh Shai rose again, right? Even at, once again, like I said, even as our Lord Yahweh Shai prophesied of it, he he knew that this had to happen. He knew that this was going to happen, right? All right. All right, let me just go ahead and get it. Um, right, because our Lord Yahweh Shai prophesied of, of his own crucifixion, his own burial, his own death, and his resurrection, man. Which I didn't mean to change that. Um, let me stay focused. Let me see. Let's get. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is it. <laughs> uh, I want to. I want to get the count where our Lord, where He broke it down, where He He gave the understanding. Um. Let me see. Bear with me one moment, Salakia. Excuse me. Here we go. The book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 31. It says, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Right? So, you know, we weren't ignorant to the prophecy. You know, for a time we were, you know, but, you know, after the resurrection, the, the gospel was beginning to actually be understood in its entirety, in its fullness, that Yahweh Shai truly was and is our deliverer, our redeemer, our redeemer. But he had to, he must, uh, he had to fulfill his purpose, man, to come and to suffer for our sins, to be slain and then to rise again for us, you know. So him dying was, was a part of the plan all along, man, you know. But let's let's continue on reading. Uh, I know I had something else put up over there on the scriptures, but Lord willing, it'll, it'll come back to me, right? Matthew chapter twenty-eight, and and let's read verse seven again. It says, uh, "Matter of fact, verse six: He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold." He goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Right. So it was even told unto them, you know, uh, that by the time they get to Galilee, hey Amen. Our Lord Yahweh was already headed there. You know. <laughs> so it was, let's just know he was even in the earth. Our Lord Yahweh wasn't just in the in some spirit realm. You know where we were, were hoping and believing. You know he's gonna come back for us. No, he was still in the earth. You know amongst that time period after he resurrected, man. You know, it says in the book of Acts chapter 1 that our Lord Yahweh Shai spent 40 days in the earth, man, after he resurrected, right? But it says, Matthew 28 and verse 8, it says, And they departed quickly from the sepul uh, sepulcher with fear, or shall I say sepulchre, you know. It says, And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Yahweh Shai met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Right? And, and, you know, this whole account is beautiful. And, and it, I love how, you know, the Spirit allowed us to have these writings, especially in these days, because we have a lot of apostates, like uh, the blood uh, Elder Benatazakba of GMS South Carolina, like he just recently uploaded the video you know about the increase of apostates man in these last days you got people just saying all 
types of crazy stuff and blaming it on the Bible, man. Preaching and teaching all kind of weird doctrines that were already in the new covenant that you don't have to call on the true holy names that, that you know, all, all kind of madness, man. Ultimately, they're, they're, it's not true. All these things that we hear, that what that Yahweh Shai is not to be worshipped. Well, why is it that when we read the scriptures and where we see prophecy taking place, even according as it is written, as they worship Yahweh Shai in the scriptures, as the angels in heaven even worship Yahweh Shai according to the scriptures, why would not we? You know, clearly they understand and clearly they know something that the earth does not, which is why they do it. The heavens praise and worship Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, right? So even as we're reading right here in Matthew 28, even his disciples, those that believed on him, you know, amongst the time of the Roman Empire being in rulership in the earth, right, which is the kingdom and nation of people who crucified him. Yeah, he was delivered up and offered up by the, the Israelites, but it was the Roman Empire, the Romans who, you know, had him crucified. They had the authority to crucify him as that was a proper method of, of torture and, and um, a judgment in those days, man, which we know that the, the uh, modern day Edomites, you know, they call themselves after various aliases, aliases, various code names. You know, they, they were the Romans. Then they're the Americans now, the Europeans, the Caucasians, the so-called white men, women, and children. They call themselves by many various titles and names. But ultimately, they're the Edomites, according to the Bible, man. They are the people of the Lord's curse. And we understand that under the Roman Empire, after our Lord Yahweh Shai was successfully crucified and, and, and when he died and was buried, right, all these things once again taking place by the authority of the, the Romans. They even had particular guards guarding the sepulchre, making sure that no one tampered with it. After the third day, man, the, the Heavenly Father sent one of his angels and and, and and manifested and showed to Mary and Mary that Yahweh Shai was no longer there, even though the sepulchre was untampered with. The, the Heavenly Father had given the spirit of life back into our Lord Yahweh Shai, and he is risen, man. He was risen then, and he still is risen now. Right. As he, as he can never taste death again. Right. Th this was a one time thing for him in order for him to be uh, uh, our high priest and, and to even have a priesthood that's unchangeable. Right. Was this that's heavy, heavy and, uh, and plenty of precepts and scriptures we can bring out to substantiate and to, to prove this, which you'll see as we go along. You know, but ultimately, this is what we're seeing that after he came and was obedient unto all the commandments of the Heavenly Father. He is to be worshipped as the only begotten of the Heavenly Father, right? Let's get that in the scriptures where the scriptures even refer to him as the only begotten of the Heavenly Father, right? And this isn't because the Heavenly Father does not acknowledge the Israelites as his children, plural, but it's because out of all the Israelites, only one came and knew no sin and suffered you know, wrongfully in the sense of by the hands of the world, man, they put him to death. So it says right here in John 1 and 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. You see that John 1 and 18, no man has seen Yahweh at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him, right? Because through our Lord Yahweh Shai, we now have mediation. We now have a, a representative, right? A go-between, you know, between us and the Heavenly Father to communicate the Lord's righteousness unto us, to truly show us the pathway, you know, what it takes in order to be a son of the Heavenly Father. And it, it looks like obedience, man, right? It's shaped and it's formed and fashioned as obedience and faith towards the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? As it says, like John 3, 16, the world's famous misunderstood scripture, but it's still true in what it, it what it says. Right. Like I said, it's not commonly understood 100 percent, but it's definitely a popular scripture floating around in the Christianity cult. Man it says in John 3, 16, for God, for Yahweh, so loved the world, the world of Israel. We know that. How we read John 3, 14. We know the precepts, you know, to Israel being called a world even links up to Isaiah 45 and verse 17. The world that knows no end. Why? Because they have everlasting life. But let's prove that. John 3, 16. 
For Yahweh so loved the world, Israel, that he gave his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, that whosoever, meaning anybody, believeth in him, and that's anybody of Israel, by the way, because we got to deal with these things in context. These are even the words of our Lord Yahweh Shai. And in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24, Yahweh Shai himself said, He is not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he knew exactly who he was referring to when he said, Whosoever. It meant anyone of Israel, right? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, right? So we see, you know, who the only begotten is. It's not all of Israel, it is Yahweh Shai himself. Right, it says first John 4 and 9, and this was manifested the love of Yahweh toward us, because that Yahweh sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. You see that? So Yahweh Shai is known as the firstborn man. And, and the only begotten, you know. There are other scriptures that, that refer to him as the firstborn, you know. The scriptures also do refer to Israel as the firstborn, but ultimately, man. You know, we understand that Yahweh Shai is the Heavenly Father's firstborn as he exists to be the firstborn among many brethren, right? As the, the righteous, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, they will be joint heirs with our Lord Yahweh Shai in his kingdom at his appearance in the earth, man, when he returns. Because, yes, not only is he not here, not only is he risen, but he will return, man. And that, that return is near and nearer even as we speak, man. Everything we're speaking on now, everything we see happen and take place in the earth, it's all fulfilling what the Heavenly Father has spoken before the world even began. Even America's conception in the earth, right? Coming from the 13 colonies, branching off from Great Britain, springing out uh, of the bottomless pit, which we know is Europe, as it is low in mineral resources, no matter how deep you dig into the earth, you know, it's, it's, it's lacking in life and mineral resources, man. So we understand all these things, even the rulerships that are in the earth, they're all set up. They have all re received their, uh, you know, dominion, so to even speak, their rulership, their kingdom, because the Heavenly Father has allowed the times for the Gentiles, the times when the heathen, you know, get to rule over the earth and oppress the Israelites as if this earth was made for them to rule over. And it, it hasn't been. Surely they are mistaken. Surely the, the world was created for the righteous, right? You know, and there are plenty of precepts on this, man. We know that this world isn't righteous. The America itself, which is one of the, which, you know, let the Americans tell it. America being the chiefest, most highest nation in the earth, the most glorified kingdom in the earth, is far from righteousness, man. It's far from righteous. They don't keep any of the law, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Bible. No, they have erected their own law, their own statutes, their own um, constitutions, man. You know, which is subject to change at any given moment, which they don't even hold themselves true to. They might hold the citizens to particular laws, but the government officials and those who, you know, uh, control America behind the scenes, even if you will, speaking in reference to those 13 families of the Edomites, you know, those particular bloodlines that control and rule everything uh, of the Western world, you know, which also, you know, just throw this out there. You know, it might seem like I'm all over the place, but there's a point. Even when you deal with Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16 on down, we understand that these are the same nation, kingdom, and people, the Edomites, who are, the Lord is going to allow to establish the mark of the beast, right? The NWO, the New World Order, through its government, through its economy, through its system, which you guys know as America. The scriptures call it Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, as Babylon means confusion, man, you know? So we ultimately, we understand all these things, man, you know? <laughs> you yeah, man. So like, yeah, neighbors walking by. But, uh, you know, we understand all these things are happening due to biblical prophecy, man. You know, so let's digress from that. Right. Which I just throw this out there too. the RFID C hip is the mark of the beast. You know, take it or leave it, man. <laughs> take it or leave it. The truth is going to be nothing but the truth, you know, but digressing from that. As we understand that um, the same people are ruling over us today that were ruling over uh, the Israelites in the ancient world. And, and when I say ancient, I'm referring to the Roman Empire when our Lord Yahweh Shai was crucified. It's the same thing going on now, man. They're ruling over the Israelites still to this day. And the Israelites still don't know what they are to believe in. They still don't know who their God is, even though he sent his only 
son, right, to come and to, to give us wisdom, to come and teach us the things that we should know in regards to our salvation, in regards to our deliverance, in regards to our kingdom coming in the earth, right? Which the Wadi Al-Bashimah Shai, that's what I had pulled up here. All right. Acts chapter 1. All right. All right, yeah. We're, we're going to get this in a second. All right. As it says in Matthew 28 and verse 11, it says, Now when they were going, behold, you know, because as you can see, matter of fact, I think we left off at verse 9. So let's read verse 9 again. Matthew 28 and 9 says, And as they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Yahweh Shai met them, saying, All hail. And they came and beheld him, and it's like him, and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him as we are to even do within these last days. Let's get what, what this term worship goes into, right? Because a lot of people say we are to worship Yahweh Shai, and you couldn't be further from the truth. You couldn't be further from the Holy Spirit, man, from the Rechach All right, let's go ahead and play this. Strong's G 4352. Strong's G, 4352. Praskuneo. Praskuneo. Yep. Praskuneo, right, which the uh, outline of biblical usage says to kiss the hand to, towards one, in token of reverence, right, which when you look up that word reverence, right, it goes into as a noun, meaning deep respect for someone or something, high esteem. You, you Negroes, Blacks, and Hispanics don't hold the name of Yahweh Shai in any form of respect or reverence, man, in any form of high esteem. You know, you guys hear that name and, and, and you guys sound like I'm speaking, you know, no pun intended, you know, not, like I'm speaking a different language, which, you know, of course, Hebrew is a different language. But the only reason why you guys really have the spirit towards that name is because, for one, you don't believe in what is written about that name. You don't believe in what was what has taken place and what has transpired even in the earth through that name, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. You have no faith, you know, and therefore when these names are uttered, yeah, a part of you, a piece of you grabs towards it and wants to believe, but the majority of you, or should I say the majority of your mind, it's 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 held in, in your own ways, in your own works, the things that you prefer to do, right? Because by the name of Yahweh Shai, things change, man. In the name of Yahweh Shai, you know, righteousness is made manifest. Truth is made known, right? Even as our Lord Yahweh Shai uh, taught himself, uh, when you know the truth, the truth shall, shall make you free, right? A lot of our people love being in captivity, love having their minds locked, love being on a, a small level, a, a, um, a low vibration, so to speak, even as, you know, the world, you know, form or commonly calls it you know being on a low vibration our people love it here because it feels like they don't have any major responsibilities they don't really have to grow up and do the things that are ne necessary for life to flourish in the earth they're fine with being you know uh, for the men to be effeminate and, and weak right and in uh moles man you know they're fine with the women being masculine and dominant and and demanding and over the men commanded the men what to do they, they like this backward society this backwards world that that america chiefly holds out on a silver platter for them man you know because once again it, it takes the responsibility out of their hands so they think as if the heavenly father is not going to require of you the things that you are doing in the earth that he made via his son our lord yahweh shai right you're gonna have to hold a, take an account for everything that you've done and everything that you said everything that you've thought but see america won't tell you that they just tell you, hey, come here, live your American dream, do as thou wilt, you know, and, and forget about the name and the truth of the Heavenly Father and His Son, right? That's what this place does. They give you idols. They give you Jesus the Christ, because in that name, that's that's their like, that's their coupon, man. In, in the name of Jesus, you can come and do whatever you want here in America. They'll forgive you. They gotta love you, right? But in the name of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, death comes, man. Judgment comes man you know of course the heavenly father is balanced so he doesn't just bring death he also brings life and peace right but ultimately the lord before we can have true life and peace in the in this earth he has to come and uproot all of, uh, all of this wickedness that has been promoted and instead in the earth and the main catalyst is america 
Babylon the Great, which is why we know what the scriptures prophesied upon this place and even upon all those who are in league with this place. Let's say you're so in league with this place that when they do implement the Mark of the Beast technology, when America does become the head of the NWO, you know, uh, pursuant to Revelation chapter 14, the scriptures already have it written that you're going to have your part in the, in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which prophetically speaking in reference to when the Lord melts America through thermonuclear missiles, ICBM missiles intercontinental ballistic missiles that's what icbm stands for at the climax of world war three america shall be melted at the appearance of our lord yahweh shai in the earth america shall be destroyed man you know and so would everyone here that that is for this place man you know and our lord yahweh shai simultaneously is going to deliver his chosen deliver his elect right but as it says man once again strong's g 4352 I know I get off in my little tangents, man, but, you know, I'm going where the spirit leads. And it started raining, too. It says, um, the second entry of the outline of biblical usage says, Among the Orientals, especially the Persians, to fall upon the knees and touch the ground with the forehead as an expression of profound reverence. In the New Testament, by kneeling or prostration, meaning to bend over, to do homage, so to bow, it says, to one or make obeisance to worship, right? When you get that word obeisance, that's what it goes into. So yes, Yahweh Shai was even being worshipped. Obeisance as a noun. It says differential respect. Obeisance, respect to bow, right? It says whether in order to express respect or to make supplication, right? And that reminds me of the account in Genesis with um, Joseph when he gave the dream about his brothers, his father and his mother worshiping him. He used the word obeisance in, in the English, man, which when you get it in the Hebrew, it goes into, you know, worship, you know, as it even says in the English, you know, behold, the sun, moon and the star and the 11 stars. They they gave obeisance unto me, loosely paraphrased, and they worshiped him, you know, and that was just going into praising him for how later on, you know, he would uh, eventually be basically the, the uh, Pharaoh of Egypt, man, the king of Egypt to to, to bring mercy to the Lord's children, their, his brothers and sisters, man. All that was set up through the Spirit. Just like how Yahweh Shai in these last days, man, he exists to be, you know, a king over this place, to, to judge it for, for all of its wickedness and to be a, a, a throne of mercy, the mercy seat for the election, for the chosen remnant of the nation of Israel, right? Let's see, as it says in the third, uh, let me see. Yeah, the third entry in the New Testament by kneeling or prostrations to do homage to one or make obeisance, whether in order to express respect or to make supplication used of homage shown to men and beings of superior rank. So the people who were amongst Yahweh Shai while he was in the earth, they knew Yahweh Shai was of superior rank. <laughs> How? He was the son of the Heavenly Father as he is to this very day. Right. It says. Uh, to the Jewish high priest. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Starting to rain starting to get into the window. I'm out here sitting in the car. Crack it just a little bit. Right. But, um, let me make sure it's not connected. Okay, yeah, so lucky I'm if that connected. Let me make sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're good. So just to make sure, let's pick up where we left off. It says to the Jewish high priest, to God, to the anointed one, right? Yahweh Shai, right? Was uh, uh, Christos in the Greek, which is where you get the English word Christ from, which just means the anointed. In Hebrew, it's pronounced Hamashiach, Hamashiach, meaning the anointed one. So yes, even in the New Testament scriptures, the anointed one was worshipped because we understood he was the he is the son of the heavenly Father. Man, it rain trying to come in here. Yeah, I'm going to have to wrap this up uh, pretty soon. Uh, as it says in the strongest definition, it says to fawn or to crouch, to prostrate oneself in homage, do reverence, to adore, to worship. Yahweh Shai is to be worshipped, man. You know, our ancestors who had the Holy Spirit then understood it. And those of us who are in the earth now in these last days, we understand it now. You know, there's no way around it. It says... Uh, Matthew 28 and 10. Hold on. So like y'all. 
Yeah. I just had to roll my window all the way up. If I start sweating, I just start sweating. It is what it is. <laughs> it says, um, here we go. Matthew 28 and 10. Then say Yahweh unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and shoot unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. See, they're plotting and scheming to try to debunk Yahweh Shah's resurrection, right? Which let's look at the same resurrection. I know a lot of y'all, you know, don't believe that this is a true thing that can take place or that that can happen. But the scripture is documented for a reason. Because the Heavenly Father has the, the spiritual ability to do that. Not only to take life, but to also give it whensoever he will. Resurrection. Here's some information. All right. It says resurrection or anastasis is the concept of coming back to life after death. So you see that. It's all it is. It's just simple. Right. And a, to a carnal mind, this is impossible. Right. But to the Heavenly Father, uh, all things are possible, man. You know, uh, as it says, and of course, it's going to take faith to believe that first it takes understanding the history. Therefore, you'll have a, a foundation to understand the mysteries. But the scriptures already revealed that uh, in Amos chapter what five and seven. Surely the Lord would Amos. No, five. and Yeah, five and seven. Surely, all right, Amos 3 and 7, right? Surely the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? But it says, surely the Lord, Yahweh, Allahim, Yahweh, power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's why I set up for the chosen men of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, to declare this 100% truth. Not everybody, not the whole world, right? And not all of the Israelites. No, the prophets have to preach and teach the 100% truth. Even though majority of the world majority of israel won't believe it that's not our job to control who believes and who doesn't but it is our job to teach what is true or right? the 100 percent truth at that which is that all of israel will not get it only the remnant only the election will obtain it and the rest of israel are blinded by their lack of faith blinded by the god of this world which is the spiritual demon satan which his physical counterpart in the earth chiefly are the Edomites, man, you know, because the spiritual demon Satan can use anyone, you know, but the physical chosen counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan is the Edomites, the, the board of wickedness, like Malachi chapter one of verse four calls them, All right? It even tells you that the Lord, the Lord hates Esau Edom. Why? Because they're completely contrary. They are clean contrary to the ways of righteousness. They can do nothing but be wicked. Just like the Israelites have the potential to be righteous, right only the election actually will be righteous on this side and it's starting by faith and works toward the name of Yahweh by shimei right matthew 28 and picking up with this folly these these wicked men plotting and scheming to keep the truth of Yahweh Shai a lot uh, a secret should i say to keep it um without substance it says matthew 28 and 14 and 13 again saying Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So a lot of Israelites, even that time, believed, man, y'all, man, he didn't resurrect, man. Y'all just stole his body so y'all could keep doing y'all little ministry thing to try to keep believers unto ourselves man we know we don't have to resort to carnal means to have faith man that defeats the whole purpose of having faith this is all a spiritual journey man this is all a spiritual path right like iuic you know they like to to uh downplay the 100 percent truth and slander the name of the true men of yahweh by shimei and shai and they say what that that uh the elders apostles of gms and all those in gms and everybody who follows gms that they basically were faith-based Israelites, man. That couldn't be anything less but less than a compliment, man. <laughs> According to the Bible, faith is exactly what we need in order to receive and inherit everlasting life. But it's not just faith in anything. 
It's faith in this gospel and the truth, what is written for us to understand and believe in these last days. As destruction is nigh at hand, man. If you can't look onto the earth and to the world and see that America is on its way out, it's probably because you're a part of it. You know, and it's hard for you to see something that you're in and that you're doing as wrong because you want to keep doing it. You know, so until the Holy Spirit comes upon you and removes those scales off your eyes and, and teaches you the right way to think, rehearsing the righteous acts, right? Seeking to keep the commandments of the Bible instead of breaking them, you're, you're, you're going to be stuck in that that mentality of, hey, I'm part of the world. I, I, I don't want to hear anything about righteousness, man. You know, but there are, there are a few of y'all that will hear these videos. And, and, and we'll begin to believe, man, these seeds will be planted in your mind, in your heart, and it'll fuel you to desire to learn more, to understand more. Lord, Bible Krishna, meaning please, you know, if I can do anything to understand your gospel, you know, if I can do anything to repent more sincerely, you know, Bible Krishna, meaning please, you know, allow me to. Right? Some of the Israelites that hear these videos are going to have that spirit and it's going to show based upon their works. They're not going to have to come and, and, and say what they believe. No, we're going to be able to tell what they believe by what they're doing, man. You know, as the scriptures say, be not a hearer of the word only deceiving yourselves, but be a doer also. Lucy paraphrasing. Right. And, and they're still wicked, you know, Israelites to this day. That's why. You know, Jacob's trouble has been prophesied to come upon the earth. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7, Daniel 12 and 1. It's been prophesied that a lot of the Israelites will die because of their wickedness. And a lot of the wicked Israelites are going to seek to deliver out the men of the Lord so they can be put to death. So they can be destroyed. So they can be betrayed. Just like they betrayed our Lord Yahweh Shai. Just like, you know, the, the 12, I'm pretty sure they was betrayed in their own particular instances and situations. Hey, man, it's the same thing all over again here today. Nothing has changed. It's the same God, man. And until his name is magnified and glorified in the earth, you know, the earth is going to continue to languish and to suffer and to grow evil by the day. Right. Matthew 28 and verse 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Yahweh had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Yahweh came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father which is and only was yahweh meaning he is he exists he the existing one right the one true name of the heavenly father yahweh it says baptizing them in the name of the father yahweh and of the son which is yahweh shai yah meaning he how shai meaning deliverer or redeemer it says and of the holy spirit the Rahakwadash. We can cannot manifest the true names of Yahweh or Yahweh Shah without the Holy Spirit being upon us. Right? Which the Holy Spirit is the is, you know, basically the Lord sending his angels to give us remembrance of the truth. That way we can understand that these are the true names and we can properly, you know, speak them for the edification sake so other people can hear and believe, man. As it says in Matthew 28 and 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, Amen. Which we know what the end of the world is. It's referring to not when some time period where the entire earth is going to be obliterated and destroyed. No, this is uh, Strong's G two eight one, and I'll play it. Oh, this is Amen. Hold on, click the wrong word. All right, this is Strong's G one six five. Strong's G one sixty five. I own. I own. I own, right? That's where you get the what? Eon, right? It was an outline of biblical usage. It says, forever and unbroken age, perpetuity of time, eternity, the world, universe, a period of time, an age, right? That's what the term eon goes into. An age, a particular part in the timeline, a particular even rulership, if you will. As the scriptures have revealed that Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right? Second Edge 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world. When Esau Edom is destroyed, when his excuse me, when America is destroyed, when his when Esau's foothold is taken out of the earth by Jacob, starting with first and foremost our Lord Yahweh Shai, right, who is the seed of Jacob. 
uh, that is the end of this world. No more America, right? No more Edomites ruling the earth. No, that's the this is the end of that. And Jacob, the kingdom of heaven, starting with our Lord Yahweh Shai, then following him, Malak Dawada, King David, his throne being established in the earth, which we know the scriptures reveal to as the kingdom of heaven. It says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob has no end. This is what the scriptures have prophesied and promised, right? Ooh, it's definitely getting hot in here. Uh, as it says, Acts chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Yahweh Shai, will thou at this time restore again the Canaan to Israel? Right, because Yahweh Shai was alive in the earth. They, they thought, Lord, so now is it time for, for the kingdom to come? Since you, you're risen now, since you're back, now is it time? It says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Meaning it's not for you to know that right now. Don't worry about that. We got to stay focused on the mission and understand the assignment and understand the tasks that we have been commanded to engage in. He just fulfilled his part. Of course, he has a, a second part that he's, you know, ensured within our hearts and minds that we know is shortly about to come to pass. But we also have a part in his in his process and in, in his kingdom coming into the earth. And that is what? Doing what he commanded us to in, in uh, Matthew 28. Going and preaching. This is what his disciples have been commanded to do. And this is what you see taking place before you right now, even in these last days, man. The Holy Spirit returning unto us and we're standing upon our feet. You know, it says in Acts 1 and 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The Rechach Wadash. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, which is where even here in America. Right. We're here preaching and teaching, witnessing before the, the Gentiles, making manifest the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Right. And then after after our Lord Yahweh Shai said that he ascended up into heaven, as you can continue reading in Acts chapter one. And understand that that's exactly what happened. Matter of fact, let's read this, right? Let's, let's just read it real fast since we're here. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up in a chariot, uh, the clouds of heaven, man, which uh, the scriptures, you know, speak and refer to as, you know, once again, like I said, the clouds, the chariots of Israel, you know, um, in the world today, you guys refer to this technology as a so-called UFO because you don't know what it is. You just refer to it as an unidentified flying object. You don't know what it is. It's just flying in the air. Or, or the new term is UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena, right? Whatever you all want to call it, the Bible has it documented and mentioned. We know that these are the vehicles that the Heavenly Father has at his disposal just for transporting his servants to and fro in the heavens and in the earth. It's that simple. That's why Yahweh Shai is no longer in the earth. A chariot, a cloud received him out of the earth and took him up into heaven while his disciples were, were, were beholding him speak. Right? It says in verse 10, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These are angels, right? Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So you see that? Yahweh Shai is not only risen, but he is going to return even in like manner. He's going to come back with the chariot. Go read that in the book of Jude, right? He's going to come back with the chariots and with the angels of heaven. And they're going to come in their chariots, man, in their vehicles. Let's get this in Tobit and let's end it here. All right, Tobit chapter 13 and verse, let's see. Let's start at verse one. It says, Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoice of rejoicing and said, Blessed be Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. For he doth scourge and hath mercy. He leadeth down to hell to the grave, right? Even meaning to captivity, and even literally speaking in reference of actual actually dying and your spirit going up into heaven, your body being decomposed in the earth, as Ecclesiastes, I believe what chapter one. Ecclesiastes goes into and tells us that, you know, I'll just get it. Um, spirit. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, 
right? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God, unto Yahweh by Shemel Shai, who gave it. So, you know, as it says, Tobit 13 and 2, for he does scourge and have mercy. The Lord can kill you and torture you, or he can have mercy upon you and let you live. It says he leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. He can kill you and put spirit, put your spirit back in your body and bring you back to life. It says, neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. So that's what our job right now is to do. Confess Yahweh before the Gentiles, before the Israelites who don't know him, all right, and before the rest of the heathen, so they can know that he is about to return and judge in the earth, as there is no other God outside of Yahweh, right? It says in verse 4, as we've been even scattered in verse 3, as it says, as we've been scattered amongst all various nations and kingdoms and people and you know, speaking different languages and different tongues, man. It's still our job, no matter where we are, whether you're in America or not. If the spirit hits you and you know you're supposed to be preaching, man, that's what you should be doing. We're not saying you got to go travel the world like IUIC would say they about to go do a world tour. No, man. Get up, man. Get up. Go up to the highways and hedges. Go preach amongst the chief place of concourse, as it was spoken of in the book of Proverbs, chapter one, you know, and ultimately, you know, record yourself, upload it on, 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 on YouTube, man. You know, this this is how the gospel is spread much faster, and much quicker. You know, that's even how this video is going up now for you to hear this message. It was uploaded. It was recorded and uploaded. Right. It says Tobit 13 and four there, meaning wherever you're scattered. Declare his greatness, right? Which we've been even scattered pursuing in Deuteronomy chapter 28. It was promised that if we disobeyed and forsook the commandments, we're disobedient, the Lord will pour all these curses upon us, even us being scattered amongst all nations, right? Tobit 13 and 4. There, declare his greatness and extol him before all the living, for he is our Lord and he is the power, our Father, forever. Let's get the word extol. Extol. It doesn't look like you have an app named Exo. You Extol. There's no one in your contacts named. Okay. Extol definition. Extol means praise enthusiastically. Praise enthusiastically. Enthusiastically. So you see that? Praise Yahweh Bashim Yahushai enthusiastically. Like you mean it. Like you know something, man. Like you actually appreciate the things that he has done and is doing and will do for us. For his holy name's sake, man. You know? For once again, for he is our Lord and he is the power, our Father forever. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end it, man. Abaratiza. Lord willing, this was edifying to the sincere, hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. Till next time, Achim, Achwathim, brethren and sisters, I'm going to end it by turning and facing the east towards Jerusalem by giving infinite and all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash. Why about the wall? All right, death to the wicked. I'm going to give double honors unto the elder apostles of great millstone, of whom I learned this 100% truth and who rule very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the beloved elder, the Zaquan of the men of Israel, Kent, the Zaquan Chazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina, and a hearty, while a healthy shalom to you, Achim, while Aquathium, your brethren and sisters, who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, till next time, wake up, Jacob. Shalom.